Well, today, then, uh, we finish up with this four-week focus on the 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Reformation. We've been looking at how this reform movement that Luther began as a theological movement really ended up changing the world and society around us. Um, it had a lasting impact on the world. You know, good theology makes for a better world. Imagine that. <laughs> Last week, uh, we looked at uh, vocation, the doctrine of vocation. How God is working in the world through you and I acting in our vocations so that uh, His will is done. Whether those vocations be that of husband or mother or brother or sister or teacher, student, uh, administrative assistant, ditch digger, it doesn't matter. All legitimate forms of work and social functions are a part of God's calling in our life. The takeaway last week was, God doesn't need our good works, but our neighbor does. On several other, uh, and some other, other occasions here, I've talked about another social impact that uh, Luther's movement has. And, and one of those being that the educational, the public education system that we have in America would not be here if it weren't for the Reformation. Luther and Melanchthon insisted that everyone in their, no matter of wealth and status, be able to read. They wanted people to be able to read the Bible so that they could compare what the preacher says with what Scripture says. And so Luther and Melanchthon began what became the, the German gymnasium school system, which was copied over here in the United States through grade school and high school. And it wasn't only until after the Reformation that the Roman Catholic Church started educating the common folk through uh, the Jesuit monks. But what I want to talk about tonight is this third great teaching that Luther reopened to Christendom, the doctrine of the two kingdoms, the unique life of the Christian, living in two realms at the same time. Some of you may know what I'm talking about if you attend my classes on Wednesdays and in G-Force here, but this is too important of a teaching to not also talk about here as well. So what do we mean? What does Luther mean when he talks about the two kingdoms or the two realms? Luther explains that the, in the, Bi that the Bible teaches us that God works in the world through two distinct realms, what he would call the kingdom of the right and the kingdom of the left. The kingdom of the right is the spiritual kingdom. In this kingdom, the power of God is wielded in the gospel. And the church is the institution responsible for handling the gospel through preaching and teaching and evangelizing. God uses the means of grace, his word and his sacraments, to make citizens of this kingdom. Most of you were probably made citizens of this kingdom in holy baptism, where God washed away your sins and wrote your name in the book of life. The right-hand kingdom, then, is concerned with justification, the right relationship with God. This work is being accomplished by servants of the word, pastors, called to use the means of grace to deliver peace now through the forgiveness of sins. The left-hand kingdom is the kingdom of this temporal world. It's the temporal kingdom. In this kingdom, then, God wields his power through the law or the sword. Government is the institution responsible, then, for promoting peace, justice, and security. Thus, the government wields the power of the sword to accomplish these duties. The temporal realm is um, concerned with justice. People, the right working of creation, the right functioning of creation, the relationship between 
people. Its interest is in the practice of ethics for a smooth living. Work is being accomplished in this kingdom by civil servants who work toward peace, knowing that true peace will never happen until the second coming of Jesus. Now, both of these realms, the right and the left-hand kingdom, are creations of God. And God still rules over both realms. Each realm has its own distinct responsibilities which they are to accomplish without bleeding over into the other realm. They are distinct and separate uh, tasks that they are to do but they cooperate to accomplish God's will. It's in the confusion of these two realms that gets us into trouble. Much of the arguments today about church and state would go away if we were to think clearly and act clearly according to the Bible about the distinctions between these two realms without confusing them. But more about that later. You can see or understand then how this teaching of the two realms just turned Luther's world upside down. In Luther's day, who was the government? The church was, the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church wielded absolute power through the Holy Roman Empire. And as Lord Acton once said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely there was no difference between church and state the church used the state to execute heretics to force conversions to to punish dissenters to collect its money the state used the church then to control the masses through phony payments and penances through um, threats of damnation if they disobeyed the prince or the duke and to um, engender support for their agenda. But the doctrine of the two realms properly delineates these, what each should do. The church is to serve as a check on government. The church is there to call out the government when it doesn't act according to God's will. Even to work against the government if that government isn't doing its job of maintaining peace, promoting justice, and uh, enabling people to work uh, prote by protecting its citizens. The church checks the government by calling out corruption and bribes and uh, playing favorites and uh, allowing laws that violate God's word like abortion. The government then is to check the church, keeping it from getting into things that are part of the civil realm that has nothing to do with salvation. The government keeps the church from straying into temporal affairs in being distracted from its prime duty, which is proclaiming the gospel. Now, the attitude of many people today is that the church is a holy place, a godly place, while the world is ungodly. It's unholy and just something that, need, that we have to tolerate in this fallen world. Luther would very vocally reject this notion. He rightly maintains that this left-hand kingdom is just as much God's creation as the right-hand kingdom of the church. And so being a soldier is not wrong because it's serving God's purpose in the kingdom as the Anabaptists were teaching back in Luther's day. Harking back to the vocations of last week then, Luther would say vocations such as being a politician, a soldier, a judge, a lawyer, a civil servant is just as good as that of being a pastor because these are needed 
in this world of ours needed for the right functioning of society. The temporal world is not evil in and of itself. It is God-ordained. He pronounced his creation very good. Sure, it's been corrupted. It has been um, damaged by sin, which is why we have government. But working in government is not capitulating to evil. We have to also be careful not to get caught in this, um, this idea that material things are bad and only the spiritual is good. That's really a remnant of the heresy of Gnosticism. You know, Gnosticism taught that material things are bad and should be shunned and avoided and only the spirit is good and holy. Don't get caught in that trap. Jesus came to save not only our soul, but our body as well. In the Apostles' Creed, we confess in the resurrection of the body as well. Jesus became flesh, demonstrating God's attitude toward his creation. And Jesus was perfect, right? Sinless. So it's not the flesh that makes one sinful. It's not material that is evil. It's sin which corrupts. That's also why we as the church minister to people both in soul and body. We care about not only your spiritual life, but your physical life as well. When we go into the mission field, we, on, we not only focus on sharing the gospel, but we share God's creation through food and supplies and medicine as well. When disasters strike, God's people don't only just pray with them, but we roll up our sleeves and help with the initial, um, help provide the initial help they need and then keep on helping them um, because the physical is important as the spiritual. Don't equate material with evil and only spirit with good. As God's chosen and redeemed people, we have both a spiritual and material within us. And we live in both realms at the same time. Sometimes you hear people comment that the church should be concerned about my faith, but not about what I do. You know, and that attitude is expressed in, you know, tell me about Jesus, but don't talk about my money. Or the church should um, talk about forgiveness and salvation and stay out of politics as if politics doesn't affect how we live in this world of ours. Or the church um, should focus on the gospel and not how I practice my daily faith. That's wrong. Faith and life go together. We live in both realms at the same time. It's the confusion of these two kingdoms that get us into trouble when we depend on the government to do our church's work. You know, government's job is not to make Christians. It's not the government's job to make America Christian. The sword and laws should not be used to force people to become Christian. Marriage was not given to the church. Marriage is given to the civil realm, to government. Somehow the church has taken it in as part of it. At the same time, government shouldn't be used, shouldn't use the church for its bidding either. Politicians shouldn't use the church to garner votes. The government should, make, should not make quid pro quo agreements, you know, with the church. We'll do this for you as long as you support our agenda. The government shouldn't become so cozy with the church that the church loses its God-given ability to check on laws and rulers. When we live 
or when we have these two realms in our mind and clearly think about them, we can see how God is still in control of everything in this world and still accomplishes his will through them. In that light, then, this church is alien soil. This sanctuary does not belong to the temporal realm. We do not view the sanctuary as a part of the United States of America. Nationality has no standing here. This sanctuary is dedicated holy ground where our triune God comes to us to minister to us through his word. A word that condemns us when we break his law, but also a word of grace that forgives us of our guilt and promises us that God neither leaves us nor forsakes us. Here, in this sacred space, only right-hand things are done. The left-hand kingdom is totally shut out. This is where the forgiveness of sins is offered to all people. Here there is, as Paul said, neither Jew nor Greek, male or female, slave or free, because we are all God's beloved people who need his grace to inherit the restored creation, the creation that is to come. Because it's only in that kingdom to come that the temporal and the spiritual will become one again. Think what that means for you. You as a Christian are unique in how you live. Because you live with a foot firmly planted in each realm at the same time. We don't shun the temporal world, but we gladly and enthusiastically embrace it and engage it. We pray for the civil realm, for government, for those who are in positions of leadership, whether they be Christians or not. We encourage each other to live in peace, to work for justice, to help each other obey good, all good laws. But we dare not bring the left hand into the right hand or the right hand into the left hand kingdom. The church is God's creation for the saving of the world. Government is for the smooth functioning of creation. Unlike the Reformed churches who have no problem using government to create a Christian America, we keep the two realms separate. We work for a Christian society, not through government and laws, but one person at a time, as we share the good news of God by what we say and what we do. Living the faith is true stewardship. Stewardship is the Christian gladly and joyfully engaging the world for the sake of Christ, following the will of God revealed in Scripture. And now may the